Hey, hello everyone. Delighted to be here, and uh, particularly in this very beautiful room. Um, so, as Laura said, I'm Lisa Gray. I work with JISC. I'm in the student experience team at JISC. And I'm here to um, say a little bit about a model that we've developed, a benchmarking tool around organisational digital capability. Um, so I have spread a few of these around, probably in some very small numbers of piles, but um, they are just in the middle section here. So if you do want to go and grab one, um, you'd be very welcome to do so and afterwards as well. So before I get on to talking um, about the model in a bit more detail, I just wanted to maybe just um, start with introducing our starting points for this work and where we've come from so far. So I'll tell you a little bit about um, the Building Digital Capability Service that we're working with, um, touch on organisational digital capability as a, as a concept, and then go on to introduce the, the, the tool itself. So I know that I don't need to say very much to this audience about why digital capability is important. Um, we know that the world is changing, our workplaces are similarly changing, um, and we need to prepare learners for a very different future to the one that we would have maybe gone out into the world or work into. And a world that where transferable and digital skills are going to be increasingly important. Um, but we know there's also a skills gap and that is causing some, um, some trouble. So how do we as educational, educational organisations ensure that our students have the skills to go and live, learn and work in a, in a digital society? And that was the starting point really for the work that we've been doing um, that stems back over the last 10 years around researching into um, how we can enhance digital um, capability. And the service that we launched last October um, started from that point of trying to support UK educational organisations with building um, individual and organisational capability um, through the development of a whole number of, of, of resources and tools to support those. And hopefully many of you are familiar with the um, six elements of digital capability framework. I've heard it referenced throughout the, um, throughout the confer uh, conference. And that was really a starting point for getting a shared understanding um, for what digital capabilities were from an individual perspective. It broke them down into six broad areas and I think has been influential across the sector in informing some starting conversations within organisations around thinking about, you know, what do we mean by digital skills? How can we um, get that shared understanding of, of what digital capability is across our organisation? But no one sets out to become digitally capable on its own. Um, so we've also done a lot of work to think about contextualising that framework for different purposes. Um, and one of the ways in which the framework has been contextualised is around the development of, of role profiles, which unpick digital practices um, that might be relevant to particular roles. And each of, we've got nine in total now, and they've been developed in line with the relevant professional um, standards to ensure that digital skills aren't seen as something separate, that it's just part of that ongoing professional development conversation. So we got the understanding of maybe what digital practices um, are critical to different roles and then realised that we needed a starting point to enable staff and students to reflect on where they were with those digital capabilities. Once we understand what's needed, you know, how do we know where, where people's starting points are? And that was where the discovery tool started from. Um, and it's been developed as a self-administrative um, set of reflective questions that staff and students can run through. Um, and they get a, a, a little tailored report at the end of that, which gives some tailored next steps and uh, links to some resources that might help them develop further. But at the heart of it was that it was developed as a reflective developmental tool, not as an objective test in any way, um, because we recognise that it's absolutely critical to ensure that staff don't feel threatened in any way. This is about providing them with that space and time to really think about their skills. Um, and that's just a little snapshot of, of the reports that they receive. Um, and the important conversations around how the action planning happens as a result of those um, of running through that process. 
And from an organisational perspective, um, although the tool has been designed as a developmental um, tool, it also provides anonymised data um, as to where staff and students are in terms of their digital capability. Um, and you can see from the, the dashboards here that it gives an indication, some indicative data around where staff and students then are, are so that that can hopefully help to um, inform uh, conversations around where training needs might be um, best, best applied. So, that was really just a bit of a run through of where we've got to around supporting the development of individual student and staff digital skills. Um, but we also recognise that if we're truly to develop digitally capable um, organisations and enable our students to thrive, not just survive, um, we need to be building organisations that enable and support digital practices. So the organisational framework was a, a, an organisational lens on digital capability and developed back in 2017 in collaboration um, with uh, Helen Beetham, our colleague, and really started to unpick the different areas within an organisation where digital capabilities would have an influence. So in the centre there, there's four core practices identified, core activities within an organisation, such as learning and teaching practice, research and innovation, communication. And we have used that to start to think about how we can identify some indicators of good practice in relation to those different elements of the organisation. And we've also been working with around 40 organisations and since the launch of the service back in October and started to unpick some of the critical success factors that needed to be in place to ensure um, successful rollout and implementation of the discovery tool. And we've been capturing all of that through um, a number of case studies and wanted to just stop and think about what those common messages were. And they tied into some of these factors um, identified here. So, you know, is there a common vocabulary being used across the organisation about what maybe threshold digital capabilities were, um, what, what, we, what we meant and understood by them? Was it being led um, by a strategic lead? And was there a cross-institutional stakeholder group that were responsible for driving forwards change with digital skills? Because it does impact on and affect all areas across the organisation. Is there a strategy that is articulating the vision around digital capability? Has HR been engaged? You know, have conversations happened with our HR around the various functions um, that they're responsible for about embedding digital capability discussions within those processes? Are the benefits clear to staff and students? Do they understand why this is important, what it means for them, and why they need to engage with the agenda? Is there a culture of um, encouraging, recognizing, and rewarding innovation? Um, because innovation with um, digital is just part of that wider um, agenda. And how are you building digital capability into the curriculum? Is that part of the curriculum design processes that are happening across the institution? And also harnessing the power of working in partnership um, to, to, to make the most of the strengths that the students and the staff bring together when they work in partnerships to um, improve and enhance and move forward with digital skills. So they were just some of the strands that were coming through some of the, um, some of the work that we've been doing with organisations and we're starting to see some movement across the board in some of those areas. But we wanted to formalise that further and develop something that would enable us to look across the organisation, identify some indicators of good practice. So we took the original model that we had and uh, with my colleague Dr Jill Ferrell um, we wanted to move towards the development of a more um, action-oriented tool that institutions could pick up and use to self-assess across their organisations where they were. And we really valued the power of a, a principle-led approach to change. Um, we've done a lot of work in the past which has started from good practice principles before we start thinking about how the technology can enhance or lead towards the development of those, of those good practices. And we've also used a, um, a benchmarking tool structure in the past. Um, some of you might be familiar with the NUS um, JISC uh, Digital Student Experience Benchmarking Tool, which has provided, uh, proved quite useful. Um, and if you haven't, do come and see us on the stand. We've got some copies there too. So we took that approach. And our first um, starting point was to identify a set of good practice principles 
for each of the six areas of activity across the organisation as a way of hanging off some of the evidence and indicators of good practice. And you can see some of the indicators, um, some of the principles um, up here. And it was really meant to be a complementary approach to the individual framework that we have. that started to look beyond individual capabilities to think more about how that was um, affected across an organisation. So once we'd identified the good practice principles, um, we identified three um, levels in terms of maturity, emerging, established, and enhanced. And then sought to identify a whole series of um, examples or indicators of what good practice looked like at each of those different levels. And they were drawn from many different um, sources, but including the USISA digital capability surveys, and also all of the case studies that we've been capturing with, around the organizations we've been working with. And it's important to note that we're not suggesting that everybody needs to be aiming at enhanced. It's really contextual. So it may not be that your organization is seeking to um, you know, achieve that end goal. It's really meant to be there as a way of suggesting some indicators that might be relevant to your context. There might be in other indicators um, that you can identify and, and add to the model. So it's, it's not set in stone in terms of its, its suggestions that it's offering. And they're certainly not exclusive. So just in way of a, of a couple of examples, I know you won't be able to read the detail, but hopefully you can pick up a model. Um, one of the principles around um, organizational culture is that the organization embraces digital technologies as a key tenet of business success. And so there are some um, indicators in the model around the development of a digital strategy, around the importance of that cross-institutional stakeholder group who drives the agenda, because we know that it impacts on all areas across an organization, we need to have people from estates, from HR, from careers, academic, research, all in the conversation, thinking through how this is going to be driven forward. And the importance of partnerships. And we have some wonderful examples. Um, this is uh, one of our case studies from the University of Leicester. Um, they started with a... Um, articulated the role of digital in achieving their wider strategic goals through their digital strategy. And their approach is one that puts digital really at the heart of what they do, recognizing the importance of people, not just the tech um, and the culture, not just the technology. So they're really looking at taking a whole organization view. And they have a multi-stranded approach to delivering that strategy, which includes the development of a framework. They took the GISC framework as a starting point and then um, adapted that to fit their context. They have a number of digital innovation partnerships running across the institution. There's a digital um, skills, skills, skills strand um, running through, as well as a strand around digital infrastructure, establishing governance structures, enhancing digital leadership, and importantly, about communicating the vision and a whole strand of work focusing how they can communicate the benefits of the approach to staff and students. Just to unpick another example um, around the learning and teaching um, area, and one of the good practice principles is around using technology to demonstrate achievement and prepare learners for a future workplace. And there are indicators in there around um, identifying learner outcomes around digital, inclusion of digital practices within the curriculum, and using subject relevant digital tools as part of that curriculum experience. And that touches on a whole number of indicators spread through the, the model as a whole around the importance of developing some threshold standards for digital skills. You know, what are your minimum expectations of your staff and your students? How can we articulate that? And how then can we start to assess the starting points in terms of where they are with their strengths and their weaknesses? And the University of Derby has made some um, really important strides in that direction. Um, so their TEL strategy has the development of digital capabilities as one of the core uh, five goals. Um, and to achieve the goal, one of their initiatives has been to work with um, subject teams to identify those digital capability um, profiles and standards. They've established a digital practice baseline, um, working with over 160 programs around benchmarking and action planning, which is leading to developing a set of best effective practice in course design and program design. So really taking forward that whole process from understanding what the expectations are all the way through to um, understanding what that means in terms of changing changes to curriculum practice and how that can be embedded within the curriculum. 
They've also um, implemented some uh, uh, digital capability courses as part of induction, and I just wanted to, to sort of touch on that critical importance of HR um, and having conversations around how these digital capabilities are embedded through retention, um, through recruitment, through selection, through induction processes, uh, professional appraisal processes. Um, and we did a little study which just explored um, some of the core HR functions and how that might relate. So where are you on your journey? Um, we have some templates at the end of the model which just provides some ways of you being able to look through the indicators, see where you across the organisation might be. And it's, it's there to be used in cross-team conversations. Um, we have a little radial diagram at the end where you can plot where you might be in terms of the different areas across the organisation. So there are really tools there to support your conversations in terms of where you are and where you might hope to, hope to get to with some prompts. Next steps, um, what we really want to do is try and link through more clearly through the um, indicators to effective examples of practice. So we've developed a, an interactive presentation tool where we're just sort of exploring how to make those connections and best easily communicate um, how that works. And at the moment, um, we're aiming that the, the, the tool will be available to the service subscribers, but we've got it here today all so that you can see the draft. Um, we'd very much welcome your comments and feedback on that um, and any conversations around it. So as a final plea, if you haven't already, please do come and join our community of practice. Um, we have our next event on the 27th of November in Edinburgh. I'd very much like you to come and join the conversations. They're not just about the GIST work. This is about sharing practice sector-wide and taking forward those conversations around how we can continue to build digital capability across our organisations. So thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. So I think we've got time for a couple of questions. If anybody's got any questions from the audience. And it will be on the stand in the next break if anyone wants to come and have a chat about it or pick up some copies. And I just want to say thank you for name-checking the University <laughs> of Derby. It was almost planned. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with Notable, our Jupyter Notebook service. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.